Hi, this is Chris Converse from Codify Design Studio, and this is a course that I've put together to teach you what's involved in recreating a web design in HTML and CSS. So the missing link of a web design is the designer. It's my belief that designers are responsible for the HTML necessary for their layout and the CSS necessary to style the website. In this course, we're going to be building a website from scratch. We're going to start by working in a composition inside of Photoshop, but then we're going to take those elements into a separate Photoshop file slice them up and export them out as individual graphics. Then we're going to reassemble all of those individual graphics using HTML and CSS and reconstruct the layout in a format that the browser can understand. So we're going to do this step by step and we're going to hand code the HTML and CSS. This is going to give you a core understanding of the way HTML and CSS work and empower you to take more creative control over your design work. And this will also ensure a stronger working relationship when you work with web developers in the future. I'd also like to take a minute and show you the final website that we'll be building. So I'm going to open up a folder here that's going to be representational of the final project we're going to be building. And let's take a look at what we're going to be creating. So here in a web browser, we can see the final design. I'm going to encourage you to change the photography, the logo, the colors throughout the course. But we're going to keep the layout structure intact so we can see exactly what this is going to feature. So one of the first things I call to your attention is the fact that this design is responsive. If I grab the web window and open this up, you can see that the design in the center holds a static size once we get over a certain width. When I come down under that size, we'll see that the design starts to become liquid. All of the type starts to move, the width of the individual columns changes, and if I get under a certain threshold that we just hit right there, we can see that we go from a large screen composition to a medium screen composition. So as I cross that threshold a few times, you can see things like the logo get larger and smaller, the actual photograph in the heading area changes, and the composition of the promos changes. These small icons go from being on the left-hand side to being above the content. And then if I continue down to the small screen size, we can see more dramatic changes take effect. For starters, we can see a much smaller graphic in the header. Our logos changed again. Our promos are now stacked instead of being in columns. But the most notable change, if I scroll down, is that the navigation has moved from being up at the top to now being down at the bottom. From a user perspective, on a phone or a handheld device, we want to make sure that the navigation is after the content. Otherwise, users might only see the navigation once they go to a page and then be tempted to click and go to another navigation spot instead of reading the content. So all of these changes in the layout from large, medium, and small screen is going to be something that we're going to be putting together throughout this course. Now, there's one other key feature here, and that is, in addition to having responsive design, we're also going to have responsive download. So what this means is if somebody visits our site on a small screen device, they're going to download a much smaller version of all of the graphics, meaning that the amount of data is going to be smaller. So people on a phone who are probably using a data plan are going to use much less data than somebody on a tablet or somebody on a computer. Now to take a look at how this is working, I'm going to come in here and open the browser up really wide. I'm going to bring up an inspection tool here. And the first thing I'm going to do is check to see how much data this site's using in its large state. So I'm going to come up here to the network settings. I'm going to hit reload. The page will reload in the background. And down here I can see all of the information that's being loaded. I can see the HTML, CSS files, and all of the graphics being loaded here with a total of 12 requests and 118.2 kilobytes of data that's being transferred. Let me come back to the browser. Let's move this down to the medium size. Let's come back to my inspection tool. I'll hit reload. But I can see the banner medium graphic is being loaded here instead of the large. Still 12 file requests, but notice that the total size is 44.8 kilobytes now. So people looking at our site on a medium sized device, such as maybe a Kindle Fire or an iPad in portrait view, are only going to download 44 kilobytes of data. And then finally, let's come back to the browser. Let's bring this down to the smallest screen size. Back to our inspection tool. I'll hit reload. Still 12 file requests, but now notice that we only have 25.5 kilobytes of data. That's almost a fifth of the original large screen size that people are going to see when they download this website on a computer. So in this course, you're going to learn how to create the HTML containers that you need to actually put these content items into buckets. We're going to learn how to do CSS3 media queries to rearrange the design, and we're going to learn how to create slices inside of Photoshop. Once you've mastered these techniques, then you can start recreating your own designs and your own responsive adaptations of your design vision. And with that, in the next movie, we'll get started taking a look at what the basic HTML and CSS structures are and how the browser actually interprets those.